Hello and uh, welcome back to the channel. So not sure I'm um, completely qualified for this, but, but we'll give it a go on some figure painting. So these are the Citadel paints I'm using. Those three colours are beige colours. Well, you can pause the video to have a look, but it's Yushabdi Bone, Zandri Dust and Steel Legion Drab. So what we've got here is the figure from the new Comet tank uh, from Tamiya. So this is one of the crew figures and it's we the, they're wearing a pixie suit. So... Uh, following the Tamiya instructions, I've sprayed these with Tamiya XF88, which is basically their new um, German dark yellow colour for AFE tanks. That gives us a nice base coat. I've gone over with um, Zandri Dust to pick out uh, the gloves and the belt. And now we're just going on with a mix of Steel Legion Drab and a couple of the other colours just to pick out the depths. So these the depths in these creases is what I'm painting in. Now with these Citadel paints, generally it's not using, I'm not using one paint. They've got a couple of um, different names for them. So they've got like base paints, layer paints, etc. And it just means the opacity as far as I can tell. Um, so all of these I'm using in a wet palette. Link in description below to show you what a wet palette is. I've done it before on the channel. And... I'm just putting the dollop of three colours and then I'm mixing between the three to kind of give me colours that I want. So once I've gone on with a dark colour, really is all we're, all we're suggesting, in the deep recesses, I've now got a much lighter colour and I've watered it down a lot. So these are all acrylic paints, just using water. And as you can see, we go over the whole um, figure now with this. Now we don't just plaster it on like a wash, although that is essentially what it's doing. It's one of the low pigment paints, so I think it's a layer paint, and it's, it lets the dark colours show through, and it gives you a nice effect, um, and you'll see that shortly in a minute. So this is just showing you the technique. It's a small brush, not plastering it on. I'm still painting it in, but it's very, very thin. A wash would be different. Here you can see now, as it dries back, you can see that depth and the tone coming through. So we've got a lot of depth now in the recesses and in the shadows, but we've also got a few highlights at the same time. And we can accentuate that by picking out high points uh, with, again, a lighter colour and giving it a highlight. But anywhere along this video, if you are following this along and you get to a point that you're happy with, that's the place to stop. Um, there's a lot of nice techniques here. I'll take it on a little bit further and then you can go obviously a lot further than that. It's basing on the skill level really. But here we're going over with some lighter paint now. So uh, we would mix these paints. This is what I've done. I've mixed one of the three paints uh, because I expect the lightest one is a bit too light straight out. So just mix it with whatever looks right and then apply it to the model and just try and pick these high points. So where there's creases and folds, you have high points and you just pick those out. And it will look a little bit stark when you begin, but then it, it fades back as it, as it dries off as well. So this is really the technique. It's kind of just using three paints, um, a dark, a mid, and a light, and mixing them together to give us the effect. We start with a base coat, we make the shadows dark, we do a wash of a light color to let that bleed through. Then we highlight the high points with a very, very light color. And now we go in with a wash just to pick out some of the recesses. And again, we don't plaster this on like it's a wash. It, you know, like you, you just wash the whole model and then rinse it off. We're just picking out recesses and stitching lines and things like that. And you can see the depth that's come just from these simple techniques. And you see the highlights are showing through, the shadows are showing through, and it's starting to give a lot of interest now on what could be a rather plain uh, colour, just a kind of beige. This is all we're using tones of beige you can see i painted up the other crew figure and i'm just sort of matching them up and there is a little bit of tone difference um the one we're actually painting is a little bit duller so that was quite good because i like the figure that i'd done so we wanted to bring in some of those highlights so I'd do a little bit of that off of camera then we've got uh the microphone i'm not sure what it well we'll call it a microphone which he's talking into so pick that out and that gives a bit more definition. And like I said, he's wearing gloves. Um, and that really was, was fine for the torso. So now it's on to the head. I always like to make life easy and start with uh, leaving it on the sprue so my hands are out of the way. 
So this is just a base coat over spraying black for the, the beret. That was the easiest way. Base coat of uh, Bugman's Glow from Citadel, which is that kind of cherry colour, I guess, plum colour. And now we're going over, we've got um, Cadium Flesh. I think it's... There's another paint. I'll list them down below. I can't remember. There's there's Cadium Flesh is the main one. And then there's a much lighter colour as well. It's all based around Games Workshop's um, IP. So the names are a bit odd. So here now, again, the same thing's happening. We're using that dark colour as a base to show through some of the layer paints that we're putting on, which, which have a little bit less opacity. And then we're also you know, being a bit heavier in some places and lighter in others, and that will let a bit of that paint bleed through. And we just build it up in layers. And you can see already there's more flesh tones showing through there. Now again, we're on with another lighter colour, so it's the same thing, mixing three colours together and um, taking the best points that we want and, and getting it the colour shades to, to what we want it to be. And now we're picking out the T section, so forehead, nose, Obviously, it's a, a bright spot. We'll do that on the cheeks as well, but we'll leave some of the darker colour in around the eyes and in around the mouth. And obviously, high points on the cheek, we'll just pick out. Again, thin the paints always. Do not use them straight out because they, they can be a bit grainy. The thinner they are, the better, but obviously then it gets a little bit... This is just on the borderline where it pulls up a little bit, so um, that can be tricky as well. But if you, there's a happy medium. You'll soon get used to it, and using the wet palette helps. You see that just in the left there, in that little Tupperware box that I've got. And once we're starting to show some highlights, we can go on again with a slightly lighter shade and just pick out a few more higher points. And again, as soon as you see something that you like, that's a fine place to stop. You know, you don't have to go to any level with these figures because once they're part of a scene, it it tells a story, it gives scale to the model and um, it, it just adds something different and you don't have to worry about painting in eyes and things like that if you don't want to do it. You can obviously move your way down there after you've painted a few more, you can sort of build into that. There you can see that's perfectly acceptable I would think. Um, as far as I'm concerned. And now we're just painting out the hair as well. So for all things like this, so for eyebrows, eyes as well, irises, things like that, I actually use a kind of beigey olive colour. Same for hair as well. And then you can highlight that with different tones. And here you can see going in with the eyebrows, making quite a mess of it. I just couldn't get in there, especially with a camera in my face. <laughs> it's quite difficult. But I was um, reasonably happy how we got it filmed. And this is the secret, which isn't a secret. You can easily go back and cut back in. So if you're st struggling to paint the eyebrows, just put a great big uh, line on there and then just cut it back in with the flesh colour because you'll find it easier. Now we've got a uh, Raikling Flesh Shade, I believe this is. And this is a wash. And we'll just run this in the recesses now. It's like a dark, kind of reddy, browny wash, which is quite good for flesh tones. And again, this is a bit of back and forth, so we'll put this on now and then we'll have to cut back in again with flesh colours. But this will just give us a good uh, depth in some of the recesses, because this is quite a good uh, sculpt from Tamiya. However, out of the two, these are two crew figures in this kit, I actually think this is a slightly softer sculpt, and I did find it uh, more difficult to paint for that reason. Because the less definition you have in one of the sculpts, as we were talking about in the previous video, uh, the harder it is to paint, you have to interpret it. So you have, to, you know, you need more skill as far as painting to put those features in when they're not moulded in. So you can see the wash is now dried, and now we're just going in with the flesh colour again. And now we're just letting that wash maybe just stay in some areas, and we won't fill it in. Or we'll go very thin with this uh, this flesh paint that we're using and let it bleed through. You can see there's a little dimple there on the cheek. So we've left that and it leaves a bit of definition. And it all helps to tell the story. What you'll find is as you're painting it, you'll start to recognise it as a face. You'll think, oh, that actually looks like a person. And that's when you know you're getting close. That's, that's the feeling I get anyway, because you're very good at recognising uh, faces. And I personally think 
if you wanted to push through some of the previous steps, this is a very good place to stop. Uh, it gives, it tricks the eye. You can see the definition around the eyes, around the mouth, around the nose. It looks like a person. In a tank, it would be absolutely fine. But if you want to go on to eyes, this is the best technique for me. And this is far from uh, fantastic. And you'll see, because of the camera, when I show you the other figure that I did, it's much better. It's because I can't get in there. And always, I'm right-handed. So I, when I'm facing the figure, I can do the figure's left eye on my right. And the left one is always a nightmare. I get caught up. It's never the same. I just can't get in there. As you can see now, it's not quite right. So now we've got the olive colour with the, and we're going to do the irises. And what this really should be is not what I've done there. It should just be a, a vertical line straight down the middle and down onto the cheek, like that. That is exactly what you should do. But I couldn't do it on the left-hand side. And then you can cut that back in and make it nice and tight. So I'm trying to fix that there. And as you can see, it's not, not ideal. But we get a, a dollop of white in there, which cuts the olive colour back to give us the iris that we want. Well, the pupil. I won't say iris. Pupil. Um, and I can see that I've made a mess of it, so we're just going to block that back in again and try again to give a nice vertical line. And it's a lot of this is back and forth, back and forth. Don't worry that you've ruined the cheek or you've painted over it so much. You know, you, you it's, it, it's fine. With these paints, they do kind of... As long as you keep them... Um, thinned with water they do melt down quite nice well not melt down but they, they, they smooth out nicely so once you're happy that you got the, the eyes and the pupils in how you want the white of the eyes then you can cut back in with the cheek colour and you can cut that eye in until it starts to look just how you want it you, again you'll, you'll notice it it will look like an eye you could go in a bit tighter there and I do I come back with the Bugman's Glow off camera and I go in with a bit of the darker colour and then build it back out. Because you'll notice when I show you the other figure that um, I, I'd actually done that. And what I've done here is gone in with the highlight colour. So what you should be cutting in with is the darkest colour that you used. And then cut into that with the highlight colour. And that will give you the effect of um, a sort of darkness around the eyes. But as you can see, for, for almost a failed attempt... Where we've cut back in, it does it does look a bit better. And you need to remember about the um, under the sort of forehead as well. Cut that back in because that can cause an effect. He is looking a bit um, one way and another way. And here you can see I much prefer this face that I'd done originally on the left off camera. You can see the definition I've got around the eyes with the darker colour. And I've got a bit of the, the flesh shade wash in there as well. And it's a slightly better sculpt, so the eyes are a bit more um, pronounced. But, you know, it's it's very... Oh, it's close enough, it's good enough. I haven't painted figures like this for a while, so uh, I am, I'm happy with this. And once they're in a tank and, and on a base, it'll all um, sell the effect a lot better. And we've got highlighting on the beret as well, just like we've done on the tunic. So it's all the same principles. You know, instead of just painting it black, we'll paint it black and then highlight with grey and then we'll sort of darken some shadows as well. It's all the same thing. Now you can see going back in now with the, the darker shade, uh, darker flesh colours. So this is like Bugman's Glow mixed with Cadian Flesh. And then we'll go on with a highlight colour. I think it's Kislev Flesh, which is quite a light kind of peachy colour. And you can see the principle now, just cutting back in there, but leaving that little rim underneath. It sells the kind of tiredness look. It is a war. Bit of bags under the eyes, and it adds some definition anyway. And then we go back in with the flesh shade wash, and we just let that go just in around the eyeballs. Now, this being acrylic, once it dries, you won't get it off. So you want to let it pull like that. You've got enough time to do the other side. And then you want to dab the brush off, on a piece of kitchen paper and then soak it up again like that just let the the dry brush wick it back up and it will just stay where you want it um, and it does leave a bit of a sheen and when these are all glued together and sorted as they are now finished you're going to see a couple of pictures you want to just hit these with a, a matte coat or even semi-gloss whatever you you like and that will sell the effect a lot more so here they are in the top of the 
rather dusty comet turret got the doors to go on which makes them sit up a little bit better but you get the idea it's just stage uh, staging them so you can see them in the, their natural environment and we do have the comet coming down the line lovely kit this from Tamiya and you can see now that um, I'm, I'm happy with that I think that's that's fine it's a basic thing and if you've done a few like this you can then move on from that and um, improve some skills. Now, there's some links down below, some uh, mini painters that I think are, are very useful to check out on YouTube, and the paints that I've used, and a few other bits of bobs. So, as always, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, do consider subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, let me know your comments down below. Uh, if you want to help the channel, there's a couple of ways you can do that in the description box. And as always, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting, and I'll see you in the next video.